How can we visualize this transformation? Well, because U and V are orthonormal matrices, they are nothing more than rotations or reflections in the first and second dimension of matrix A. On the other hand, if the matrix schema, which contains the singular values of A, would have been a square matrix, then it would simply represent a stretch of the singular vectors. However, we said that the matrix sigma is a rectangular diagonal matrix, and thus it contains the singular values on the mine diagonal of the square matrix containing the rectangular matrix and zeros in rest. Therefore, this matrix can be visualized as a stretch in the direction of singular values, but only up to a certain point, followed by a projection onto a lower or higher dimensional space, depending on whether the matrix A has more rows or columns. To better understand what the sigma matrix does, let's consider an example. Imagine that we have the following 3 by 2 matrix sigma and the following circle in the 2D plane we want to project. The first thing we do is to stretch it along the x and y dimensions using the singular values, and then add the z dimension. On the other hand, if the sigma matrix had the following form, so a 2 by 3 matrix, and we use the following sphere in the 3D space, we would again stretch along the x and y dimensions and then remove the z dimension. 